welcome back to Life with Roma. My name is Maria. I'm the other half of Life with Roma. And today, we're gonna be talking about food. Yes, my favorite. I love food. But as you all know, I'm just gonna do a little recap. In our last video, we actually spoke about what our goals are for Yosemite. In our last video, we actually gave you all an introduction of how we're preparing to go on our trip in this summer to Yosemite and other places in California. As you all know, we're gonna be covering everything from all the materials that we gather, preparing our vehicle, our diet, and our health journey to to get in fit to actually go hike and be in nature and then the last one is for us um, our actual journey to go to Yosemite what it takes to drive all of that stuff if you want to know more please go to our first video on this channel where you'll be able to see so sort of an introduction of what we're planning for today's video though I am gonna be focused on our second goal which is our health and fitness goal for Yosemite I am going to be sharing a recipe with you all that has been key in well, not only my whole life, um, but it's one of Rudy's favorite dishes and it also has a lot of the food groups that you need to ensure that you have all the nutrients that you need. I am not, this isn't like, you know, we're not on a diet. Whenever I say diet, it means nutrient intake, not restrictions or anything like that. We are portion controlling and talking a lot about intuitive eating, understanding when we're full, taking, you know, making sure that we eat a good breakfast, that we snack throughout the day and that we have a good dinner. Usually our dinner, what you're gonna notice is I make four portions of our dinner and the two portions will be for tonight's dinner and then the leftovers we will eat for lunch. And that's usually how it looks, right? And usually for breakfast, we also will be doing juicing. We will be recording a video on our juicing process, our favorite recipe as well. I think that that will be awesome. But this is just about yummy food, guys. So please subscribe, comment down below, and like this video. We're really excited to be going along this journey with you all. So stay tuned because I'm gonna be making spicy picadillo. And let me know if you have any questions. All of the recipe and sort of step-by-step -step will be in the video, but also we're gonna be um, putting it in the description down below. So if you like videos like this, please comment down below. Please engage with us. I'm really excited. You know, this is one of my recipes and I'm sharing, with, sharing it with y'all. So y'all must be pretty special to me. But cook this at your house. Tag me on Instagram. Just tag me at with love maria i'll leave it right here but this is gonna be cooking in the tiny house with me and i'm really excited so now we're gonna make our salsa so we're gonna be making salsa you use two tomatoes two serranos one jalapeno two cloves of garlic seasoned to your liking and then if you want optional it's gonna be cebolla um onion but stay tuned i am gonna put the portions down below i am making right now enough salsa for three meals okay just i'm letting you all know but our actual recipe is gonna be for one and you'll be able to see about how much i put remember i season like my ancestors i am a true mexicana but i usually just do it to taste so do it to taste as you like it and we're gonna be going remember you're gonna need tomatoes serranos jalapeños onions garlics and whatever seasonings that you like and i will show you all what seasonings i use let's make some salsa so this isn't the best lighting ever but i have already washed my my vegetables uh, something else that i do tell you is beforehand i always get one garlic clove and i separate it and take the skins off just so that it's easier for me to cook if i chop it i can it's easy for me to chop or if i put it whole in the blender then it works as well and then i also what i do is i also cut up my onions before because you know dicing your vegetables takes a lot of time especially if i get off of work like at 4 30 4 5 and then have to come straight to cook you know it takes a lot of time probably like 30 minutes so cutting them beforehand really really helps you so for this meal since i'm gonna be making three batches of salsa i am using three jalapenos six serranos and seven tomatoes first you take off the little stems so you just pop them off that's all i do i just pop them all off so usually what i do is i make a puncture on here usually it just it just helps me with boiling it um so that it can boil a little faster i am gonna be boiling it there's all you can also put it in the oven and roast them but this is just up to you and the amount of time that you have so that's usually how it looks 
and then since i'm making such a big batch i am gonna add water i am going to start heating my pan i'm gonna put it at around a nine the highest level and then we'll go from there so this is about the amount of water that i put in i believe it's about four to six cups depending if you're just gonna make one batch or one batch of sauce i usually suggest you put in two because it's gonna evaporate so i'm probably gonna do about a palm full of salt like about that much let it come to the boil make sure that it's in high heat time i'll show y'all when it'll be the best time for you to turn off your heat then I'm just gonna let it boil. So the salsa recipe is done cooking. You should find them that they're really soft. Your peppers are really soft. I have added them to a, to our Nutribullet and I have added about a pinch or two of salt. And here you're gonna see four garlic cloves and the other two are in here for the other portion of the salsa. So this is what the salsa looks like once it's done. I did make quite a bit. This is going to be the portion that I'm going to store. Of course, make sure you let your salsa cool before you put it in the fridge because then it'll get bitter or sour. But this is usually, I make it a little bit watery so it can be juicy with the, with the actual picadillo. So this is what the salsa looks like. And then this is going to be the portion that I'm going to use for my actual picadillo. So that's how you cook the salsa for picadillo. And then the next step is let's make our rice. So for our rice, I usually use just one pan. Make sure that you have a cover for it. It's really important for it to simmer. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making two cups of rice. So for two cups of rice, I'm going to be using four cups of water. And what's really important is for you to wash the starch off of it before you start cooking it. So I usually put it in a strainer and I make sure to wash it really good until the water runs clear. And then I bring it to a boil. I, saw, I season it a little bit. And once it's at a boil, you give it a last mix and then you put it for simmer for 18 minutes. So I'll be walking you through it right now. Yay! So I'm using H-E-B long grain white rice. So I'm going to be measuring now two cups. So the next step is for you to wash your rice until the water runs clear. So I usually wash it once and then I'm going to wash it again just so that this water down here is clear. What I usually do now is I'm going to turn on my pot for the rice at around 7 so it can... Rice is in, two cups of water. And then for seasoning, I'm just gonna add one pinch of salt and then I'm gonna bring it to a boil. The rice, I'm just gonna bring it up to a boil. And then once it's on the boil, I'm gonna lower it for 18 minutes. So as you can see, this is already at a boil. I'm gonna let it boil a little bit longer. This is the perfect stage for you to add cilantro and lime or other seasonings to your rice. But since uh, our, our beef is and our salsa is gonna be very flavorful, we really want that to balance out the meal. So just a pinch of salt in there for now and then that'll be good. So I, this is at a good boil, it's rolling. Now what I'm gonna do is put it on low, on your lowest setting, not one, on the lowest setting. And then you're gonna cover it, make sure you cover it. It's on low, set your timer at, at 18 minutes. So start and once it hits 18 minutes, turn off your heat. And then just let it cool down with the, don't, don't take the, the cover off. Let it cool down and it'll just get fluffy and finish cooking with the residual heat of the pan. Now what we're going to do is we're going to chop up our potatoes because I didn't pre-chop the potatoes. I think I'm going to pre-chop them today. Um, but all you're going to do is for this meal, I'm going to peel two to three potatoes for the meat. What you're going to need, once you're... Your salsa is done, you're gonna use the same pan to cook your meat in. For now, I'm gonna start prepping my actual protein and what I'm gonna saute in this pan. Like I said, you're gonna use the same pan to cook your meat. What I do is, so I use 93.7 from H-E-B ground beef. You're gonna need potatoes, make sure you wash them. You're gonna need onions, garlic. So first steps first is you're gonna saute your garlic and your onions until they're soft. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in your your ground beef, you're gonna brown it, um, and then you're gonna add your seasoning. So we're gonna use Uncle Chris seasoning from La Fiesta. I'm gonna use some black pepper from H-E-B. This is the best. And I'm gonna use some crushed red pepper. 
some garlic powder and then you can add additional salt but i'm not gonna use salt because i'm gonna use the uncle chris seasoning from la fiesta this is the bomb this is the best i highly suggest it so this is what i'm gonna use onions garlics ground beef 93 7 red pepper black pepper garlic powder uncle chris seasoning and then of course the potatoes so these are the potatoes and the onions that i'm going to be using um potatoes this is about the size these are three potatoes of the golden ones you can do about half an onion if that's what you prefer but half an onion is what i recommend um three potatoes and then two chopped up garlic cloves what i do is put it on medium on medium heat make sure you have your aceite i do use the masola that's about as much aceite that i put on so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my onion. I am going to only add my onion because I want it to brown. There's probably going to be some potatoes in there, but that's okay. I'm going to let this soften a little bit and then I'm going to add the garlic. Add your garlic. This is freshly chopped garlic. So the heat is right now at about medium. It's On mine, it says that it's around a four. I'm going to put it at around a three and a half because I want them to get soft. Once it gets a little bit soft, I'm going to leave it about maybe two more minutes to soften. I am going to start preparing my meat. Awesome. So it's been about two minutes that uh, my onion is browning. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my beef. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to season it. And I'm going to do about 14 turns of the black pepper. I'm going to do about uh, 2 teaspoons of the garlic powder. I'm going to add some red pepper flakes. And then my favorite, Uncle Chris. I'm going to do this liberally. So now what you're going to do is you're going to brown your meat. Make sure I chop it really finely. And then I just make sure I mix the onion. And then typically when I'm browning my meat, I'm going to higher it a little bit. I'm gonna, I just put it at a six. I'm just going to leave it here for a couple of minutes. So this is how it's looking. Usually there's not potato in the bowl. But I'm just going to let it brown. And then once that browns, I'm going to add my potatoes and my salsa and we're going to cover it for about 15 minutes. So the meat's already a little bit brown. It's okay if it's not all the way done. It'll cook with the salsa and the potatoes. And then this right here has been browning for about three minutes, three to five minutes. This is a perfect consistency. So now I'm going to add my potatoes. And I'm going to mix it in. So this is how it looks. And then the next step from here is you're going to put your salsa in. I'm going to add some water so don't waste your salsa. So you're going to give it a stir. Your salsa is really well incorporated. So here you're going to leave it at around a 7-8. That's how it's going to cook. It's going to come to a boil. Make sure you cover it. Um, I'm going to give it about 15 minutes and then I'm going to check on it. Hey guys, so this is how it's going to look once it's done. It's been about 15 minutes. It was uncovered. The way that I find out if it's done, this is, you know, listen to my ancestors, right? Um, I am going to turn off the heat. So what I do is I put a potato to the side, as you can see that one. And then what I do is I try to cut it with my, with my spoon. So as you can see, it cut really smoothly. So it is done, and now we're going to taste it. So guys, Rudy's going to taste it. He's going to be our taste tester. I mean, it's always, tastes the same. It's always good. I usually have a bowl of this, and it's a big, pretty big Tupperware bowl. Uh, and I usually eat the whole thing, so um, this is really good to eat. It's really good. It, if you put in the time in it, you can always put it in the refrigerator, take it for lunch the next day. Uh, you could even make a whole bunch of it if you're into like meal prepping and whatever. And uh, I mean, it's basically everything you need. Uh, carbs, protein, good amount of fat, 
um, and it's it's really good so you should try it out so guys as you watch Rudy he's eating here but a little bit of um, to close this video out I want to let you all know that your food doesn't have to just be broccoli rice and beef or your choice of protein your food can be flavorful it can be healthy remember it's all about controlling your portions because then you know the the construct the restricting yourself and it just leads to more negative consequences in the future so just remember have your food can have flavor it can be colorful it can be spicy and it just all that matters is your portion if you want to see any more of my mexican recipes please comment down below i make some bomb ass albondigas enchiladas verdes i make good food all around so if you're interested in seeing more of these cooking videos please let me know subscribe comment yeah so the rice is really good it's a uh, really spongy and i guess part of the fact of actually washing it before you know get rid of all that starch uh, i even told my mom about that that she does that and then she started doing it now so it's like i said we've been used to eating stuff like this all the time and she showed me about washing the rice and it makes a really big difference it's really spongy also we love you mom so please like share subscribe comment down below if you like barbecue if you just want to see cooking videos let us know this is a flexible channel where we want to just create and just build relationships in the community with you all as Rudy just finished his whole meal. I usually eat in a hurry because I'm always heading somewhere. I gotta go work on a truck right now. This is really good. It's something you can eat quick and it'll keep you full. Uh, it's also pretty good nutrient based. Go, go to his channel at Save the Labor Cost where you'll be able to see his work on motorcycles, his work on tiny houses, do-it-yourself work. The current journey that we're on is we're going to Yosemite, which we're so excited. But stay tuned for all the awesome content that we have planned. You'll be able to see both our personalities and it's just going to be really fun. But we'll see y'all later. We love you. Bye. Bye.